Hey everyone, I am making another attempt at a cooking video. This one's very simple. I feel really weird standing up. I have I've never filmed a video like this. Um, I apologize. I am a camera person of one, with one camera, and so I will be working on angles and stuff as I make more of these. So I am making for you my most baked item that I make. It's a family favorite. It's great in the summer. It's great in the winter. Um, it requires one, two, three, four ingredients. Six if you don't have one thing. And I make it, like this evening, I'm making it to go with meatloaf, which isn't really a summer dish, but it's great as a side with salads. It's great with your heartier stews and soups in the winter. And if you haven't looked at the title above my head, it's beer bread. And I personally cannot stand the taste of beer, but I love beer bread. And I found it by Googling beer bread years ago, and it is the most requested recipe on Google, I think, or it comes up number one in all the search um, engines. So anyway, it, the ingredients are very simple. Three cups of self-rising flour. This is key. Self-rising, which is different than all-purpose flour. If you don't have all-purpose flour, we'll talk about that in a minute. So three cups of self-rising flour, which I have pre-measured right here, a quarter cup of sugar, and just white granulated sugar, nothing exciting, and one, I think it says 12 ounce, and then what, how much is in a beer? Yes, one 12 ounce can, or bottle in this case, of beer, and since we are in Texas, I had to get Shine or Bach. Um, the kind of beer that you use can kind of influence the flavor of the, of the bread, so I've done it with a, um, like an orange flavored beer or a hard cider. It, it cannot be a non-alcoholic beer though because the yeast and fermentation in the beer is what makes the bread rise. Now, if you don't have self-rising flour, you can use all-purpose flour, but then you need to add, let me check and make sure I have it right, one teaspoon of salt and three teaspoons of flour. And then the final ingredient that we do at the very end is anywhere from a quarter cup to a half cup of melted butter. I went the whole full Monty and used a half cup of unsalted, I prefer unsalted butter. So, here's how it goes. Uh, take your flour, take your flour, and they say to sift it, so I just put a little um, sifter over the bowl and fill it up a little bit, and then I just shake it. There, it goes very quickly. When, when I was growing up, my mom had one of those old-fashioned hand sifters. Do y'all remember them? Like it, it was like it looked like a big, giant measuring cup, and there was a little crank that you pulled, and it sifted the flour. I don't know if they still make those, but I, as a kid, really enjoyed helping her cook with that. That was my role. I got to use the flour sifter thingy. Anyway, so there's three cups of flour. Not very exciting to look at. And then it says to add the dry ingredients first, so just in goes the sugar. And then we give that a little stir. This is kind of fun. And then the very exciting part, pour in your beer. Now, don't just dump it in here and get a lot of foam. So, you know, channel your best bartender and just kind of tip it down, pour slowly. This is an easy recipe to cook with your kids, but I would not recommend letting them lick the batter. Just a thought there. So I'm pouring it in. A little foam is unavoidable. Okay, recycle. It smells good, it just tastes terrible. I don't know. I wish I liked the taste of beer because it's certainly a lot less expensive than other alcoholic options. And then slowly give it a stir. You want to incorporate all the liquid and it's not, it's a, it ends up being quite a dry, lumpy batter. It's not like a smooth cookie or like cake batter. It's, it's falling out of my bowl. It's a, uh, to really work it with the spoon and make sure you get all the dry bits mixed in with the beer. Okay, so I have it all mixed up and I'm going to come in closer to the camera and show you I have a bit of batter on my finger. Show you what it looks like because you're not going to, more than likely, you will not be able to get every little bit of flour mixed in. So, um, it's not particularly uh, creamy. 
it's a bit lumpy and there is a bit of flour stuck on the bottom there that wasn't incorporated. So let's get this in the pan and I'll show you the final step. So I just have a regular sized loaf pan that I sprayed with a butter flavor cooking spray. You can use the nonstick spray of your choice. And I'm just going to dump this in. There is still a little bit of flour in there, but not enough to make a difference. And I'm just going to try my best to spread it in the pan. Like I said, it's a very, I mean, I'm, my hands are clean. It's very sticky dough, but it's, it doesn't spread very well. So I'm just going to try to get everything off the spoon, push it in the corners. This will expand and fill the pan. I promise you this. Now, this next step is optional, but I cannot imagine eating this bread without it. If you just put it in the oven like this, you will get a lovely, soft uh, bread. No crust. This next part, you pour half a stick of melted butter. I just stuck it in the microwave for a minute. You pour it over the top, which I'm about to do. I'll go this way. And I'm just going to push down, make sure it's covered all the parts. Okay, so it is a gooey mess right now. It's all over my fingers, and I'm going to come in and show you what it looks like in the pan. So that's what it looks like in the pan with the, with the butter spread all over it. Let's get that in the oven. So the point of this with the butter is that as it bakes, it forms a really hard, crunchy, buttery crust and a really soft, moist um, interior to the bread loaf. It is heavenly to eat by itself, like I said, sliced up and eaten with salads, um, on the side of, of a heartier meat dish, just as an accompaniment instead of potatoes or something like that. So I'm going to pop this in my oven. The oven's preheated at 375 degrees. And this bakes for one hour, so it's pretty easy to just stick it in and go do something else. Okay, so I apologize for the timing. My dishwasher is running directly below the camera, so if you hear some swishing weird noises. But I've got to get dinner on the table, and this is not going to make it through dinner. So here is the finished loaf. It's still a bit warm, and I'm just going to cut into it, and I'll take this little end piece off. So you can see it's a very... Um, textured, um, crunchy on the outside, can you hear that? And then there's the beautiful yummy inside and I will bring this piece up close and personal. So you can see the beautiful texture a little bit here and then it's warm and buttery. That butter just made a beautiful outer crust and I'm going to be rude and eat on camera so you can hear the crunch. That is really good. I'm gonna go put that away before Bosley gets it, get dinner on the table, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.